For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, everyone knows, over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project hasn't been my own career. It's been Get Carl Famous. Yeah. I want people to recognise him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald-headed mank twat. I well, want... let me tell you now, Rick, I've been out and about and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkinson got a head like a fucking orange. Well, I've and I've been... had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkerton. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and um, had a meeting. And uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action? <laughs> Thriller? Whatever. Because you can provide any of it. I love that, that he's playing it cool, like yeah, you've yeah. come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilkin, the movie doctor, what do you need, <laughs> Papa? So, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always by him. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, yeah. don't they? Just, just so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when if you just Randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, that. That that to me is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right, it doesn't work the same. Just just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking, and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, uh, so, so anyway. Aristotle, he said, "Sit down. I've got an idea for you." Uh, Aristotle said, "Plato, what you go right." Just keep talking, and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more. It's building. Right. Okay, so who did you say? Who did you say? So I said, right, I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, all right. Did they look at you like you're a fucking Clive. idiot? <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? Wait, uh, he, he must said, be amazing. Yeah, he's like, Clive Warren, get me Clive Warren <laughs> yeah. on the phone. Who's get Clive me Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca de Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that come she from? She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca de Mornay. But hang on a minute, you could have... <laughs> You can have oh any God. film star. This is your fantasy <laughs> casting, and yeah. you choose a bloke that doesn't exist and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for ten years. Oh God! Why didn't oh. you choose, you know, a, a someone who existed Jayla or someone who's a oh big star? Oh God! Clive <laughs> Warren. Oh God! Oh. So God. anyway, starts off, and the people, you know, you're seeing into their lives from yeah. like the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio was on. You know, they're going about the day, they're having the breakfast, they're saying, oh, what are we doing tonight? And you're thinking, oh, they've got a nice life. Mm. She, She's like, love you and all that, yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh. So Clive Warren's... They're dead. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part. Because he, he ain't got much to do, has no, he? No, I don't... If I, if, I, if I know Clive Warren... And I think you do. I think I do. Carry on, so he, he's hit by a bus, so he's so dead. So he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, It's got yeah. you, right? She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's fed up. She's devastated in that. Um, doctor says Clive's dead. Who's playing the doctor? Jack Nicholson House. Um, sort of. Uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the 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 old the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says your husband's dead. She's like, oh god. What happens then is, he says, but listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out. Right, right. And, and, and a fact that I'd read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read a fact. thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain, run it on half. Have. So, 
this is this was in my mind still. Well, half your mind, yeah. So I said, what happens is Morgan Freeman says, been working on this. You can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you tell me this for now? My, my husband's just died like twenty minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead. Because it, it stays awake for a bit when you. Oh, he's, he's not dead then. Fine. No, no, but yeah, he, he is. But they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. So, no, no. he's gone. No, no, no. You're hit by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if if, uh, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, 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 dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're not dead. Coma. No, they come out of comas. All right, then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus. But the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma. But his brain is still awake. So change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on though, I I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going. Look, he's definitely going to die in this coma. Take the brain out now. Pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What they do that? What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when like how, how I've signed that donor card. Yeah. Like, if anything happens to me. No, no, no. no. There's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. Yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> ah! and they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. Right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive, and it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you cord. can link it up to the eyes, and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do. You're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going. Well, we're going to try and do a brain transplant, Carl. Um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> then what happens is, they say. Do you want half of his brain in your head? Half she's, of his brain she in says, head. She says, definitely not. I'm having you struck off. She starts screaming. She calls the police. He gets arrested. Yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have, like, someone else's arm put on their body and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but he's only in a coma. Yeah. No, but he's not going to come out of that co- coma. Right. So, so it's like this or nothing. It's right. like, look, you know, what, what we're going to do here, we can either turn the switch off yeah. or we can put his head in your head. But why would but you... So, why? so what he does... So what they do then, they're going to take half his brain... Half of his brain, take out it, half of hers, pop it in place. Why would she do that? Because she loves him. But hold on. Well, no, no, wait, 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 wait. What would she then be? Because this is what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, okay, sorry. What happens is, he, he explains all this, so, I mean, this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film, but I'm just rushing I, it. I just switched it off, now. but yeah. No, you wouldn't. This this bit would have you. Mm. So what? Well, what, I'd have actually left when I... I wouldn't have even gone in to see a film starring you know, Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay, <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is... She's the same as you. She says the same thing. She goes, why would I do that, Doctor? Mm. And uh, he goes, well, what will happen is he's gone, but you'll you'll have his thoughts. So in the morning when you say, oh, I don't know what to have, will they have cornflakes? His bit of the brain will sort of say... Have a Weetabix. Have shredded wheat or yeah. whatever. And she's like, oh, yeah, good idea. Sorry, sorry. So the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes. Yeah. So the thought... When what do you she... mean, yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Wait, oh, wait a minute, this is only Act that's, 1. That's just the first bit, everything's going well, she so, has it done. So what is, what, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone, yeah. but, but now with and again, cl- with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is, it's all going well at the beginning, and she's... So she can't decide what so, so to wear, she's got, he, So she's had half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. OK? And, and Clive Warren's uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round... Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets the first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of... Uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, writing his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what know does he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters, because... Yes. Otherwise, yes, he, it does matter, Carl. What's what's he, what's he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what, the I mean, point of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. And Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's." 
right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me sort of going, oh, you never guess what I've just thought about or whatever. I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If, when, when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've else? got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, uh, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I would can I... also categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you're loving that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And, and I go, no! It's madness! I don't think you It's wait. madness! All right, all right, all right. Let's... So tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah, can we do lunch? Um, there may be like at the funeral because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave, and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, "Why is she laughing?" Yeah, and she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, "Look at her head." Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like Stuff on orange. the family. Yeah, <laughs> little cameo for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, "Oh, it's quite funny." This, mm. yeah. and then yeah. you hit them hard. <laughs> Oh, it's, the, right, but, it's the maddest. It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental have to case. Say, though, right, I have to say though, I am hooked now. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is, <laughs> she hears the voice go, "Leslie, where are you?" Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No, no. Just Rebecca. thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, "Who's Leslie?" <laughs> He's going, "Oh." So he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip here. I've let something slip, so she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh! So... He's, for, he was having an affair. This is, this is the thing, so she's trying to hunt down... Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know... Where are your So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got, she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another, Leslie, or it's is it a woman? It's another woman. Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone... What would happen sort is. of happen is? Oh yeah, because we don't, don't want to ruin it for them. This will yeah. be this will be filling the multiplexes in no time. Yeah. No, it's, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in a head. But listen, let's I just get to hang the on end. a sec though, Carl. I don't. Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening. On. Come on, what's the end? Waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right. So what I said was maybe what happens is his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right. How it, is now? What? How is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's His taking brain, over. That gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian film. Hold on. Film. This is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he overpowers her. So she is now. A lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think, hold on, why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's r- relationships. It's the love of two brains. Right, OK. Again, can That's anyone out there, line. can we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there. He's got something yeah. there. But my point is this. Why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about... Cooked. Dave likes I like my it. food cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Clive Warren on this food cooked. Yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah, what, what I'm I mean going to turn into a lesbian. People... Shredded wheat. People like what they like. And it's Ooh. the same way, like I've said to you before, with... Someone who's been going out with a woman and then is found out that she's got a twin sister and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin. It's all the same. You're after the same thing, aren't you? Yes, but that... When a cat dies, you buy another one. <laughs> it's the same thing. You want that same... Yeah, but you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation. In the case of your twin scenario, they both look the same. Yeah. Has there, has there ever been one where um, it's a uh, twin boy and girl? Go, well, I was going out with her, but, I mean, he looks a bit like her. Yeah. I loved boobs, now I like cock. This is your problem. You don't know anything. And this theory about if your mouth talks enough, the brain will kick in soon. It hasn't. Oh, chimpanzee, that is running it down again! Extracts from his famous diary. 
Box jellyfish, crocodiles, snakes, blue ring octopus, red black spiders, funnel web spiders, great white sharks. Just some of the reasons that put me off going to Australia. <laughs> Every creature is bigger and angrier than anywhere else on the world. <laughs> I put it down to two things. One, it could either be because spiders and snakes and the like normally hide under rocks. The earth is one big rock. Australia's at the bottom of the big rock, and they're trying to hide under it. <laughs> Carl, you it? are a maniac! It's You're... just thinking about it, thinking about where spiders go and that, and that works, doesn't it? No! Why doesn't that work like Because there's rock? no real upside down and bottom of the earth, is it? It's all relative to what? It's relative to what? A map that you well, saw. Well, it's a coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> right, OK, read on. I've heard that a lot of people go camping in Australia, which I think's mental. If I was to fly all that way, I'd want a decent bed. Mm. Plus, I wouldn't be camping in a place where there are killer spiders wandering around. I agree. I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was all a bit of a nightmare, because I was going with my mate... And uh, he said he knew someone who knew knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, who had a bit of land in the garden. What's the point, though? In it, you know, what's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of like a spa down the road and like a pub? no, because you're by the sea, aren't you? It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, so, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have Getting for like, when they have parties it, yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land... Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> so now you're stuck in the middle of a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. Well, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of clipping on the beach. But, uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. So we oh, thought nice. that's the place to go. Oh, yeah, no, the municipal that, tip. What was it? Was it was it chemical waste or just like you know no, just, um, coke just syringes stuff. and oh, uh, lovely. But, but listen, though, you've got to think sure. about that. Rusty, if there's, if there's rusty. If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like it's a way. That's like a little tip of. So you um, could have slept in a public lavatory. Yeah. Yeah. This one's nice. What is covered in shit? It means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> so that's that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there. And then Some what was annoying is... He puts down the tent. We, uh, we, what's the name? We, uh, it was already up. It, it was carried already, it all the way, carried it all the way there. They won't let's pack it down. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was... As soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, that's all the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday makers, they... Uh, uh, they started setting up their tents. Oh, yeah. oh. No, near... Look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah. Near the nappies. And um, they offered us some sausages. Oh, right. My mates said, oh, ignore them. That's like code for uh, swingers. What? No! What, so there were some people cooking some sausages, <laughs> yeah. saying, would you like a sausages? We've made too much. And you it's said, no, that's code for swinging. Don't talk to strangers. It's like, we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone, you know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And so, uh, so you know but, it. but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about 45. Who were they, that? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? That means you, you, you say, right, I want the bold one, love. <laughs> If it's like wife swapping, should, should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't. I don't know all the rules and that. But uh, he's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of. I said, don't believe sausages is a code, a code for swingers <laughs> because eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, "We'll get your pants off," and they go, "Wait a minute, we just have some sausages." They go, "Oh, this isn't working. This code." But why we would they be? Code. Why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. Makes you wonder. We don't. Let's not trust these people. Let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. September thirtieth, going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full, and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> 
We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh, yeah. I bought a fan to put in our room to drown out the sound of the mopeds. I've heard Wayne Rooney does the same thing with a vacuum cleaner. What? If you've just got a noise, um, that's constant. It makes you nod off. And it drowns out every other background noise. So all you've got is, like, if it's a vac, it's just... And if that's constant for, like, all night, mm. you just nod People off. People next door going, they've got their vacuum cleaner on again. But poke, poke the chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that's how nuclear wars start. <laughs> yeah. It works. Doesn't work. We Ear plugs. Ear plugs. Drown out everything. I tried them. I didn't like it, did I? Why not? Because I could hear my heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a strange little creature. Oh. Didn't do much this morning. Just sat by the pool, saving insects that flew into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die like fucking Noah. That's right. You see nothing good. How were you like, saving them? Did you wait for them to hit the water, then fish them out, or you grabbed oh, them in the air? Stuck oh. my finger on the top, they grabbed on, <laughs> lifted it off. And what, when, it, like, a, some sort of insect lifeguard, you'd see someone landing, and you'd go, right, that's me, da 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 and you'd go in there. But it's hard to turn a sort of a blind eye to stuff like that, because you know that's something, you know, you're witnessing death. And if you can save something, you do, don't you? You do your bit. And at night, I'd sort of think... Have they learnt the lesson, or will they be back, and will they be dead in here tomorrow? But if they can get an extra day, I've done my bit. I can't do more than that. I'm on holiday, do your bit. I'm lucky enough to see the world, do your bit. I love it. I did my bit. I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he was running around saving flies and things. It's just something, there's something so sort of... Beetle, an old lady drowned. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was saving a beetle.